Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, weeknight Dharma talk on the Chan Chi, conduct by, conducted by Master Xin Hua a long, long time ago. Thank you all for coming, especially on a very wet Monday night in San Jose. Uh, you know, Californians, we weak. It gets a little bit wet, the road, we, uh, we stay home. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you because um, it's, uh, it's uh, very rare to be able to listen to the original instructions from the great Master Xuan Hua, how he trained his disciples uh, on Chan. Uh, and um, so uh, I'm learning a lot uh, as well myself. Uh, and I see this as something that uh, can be repeated for the next generation. And then you can then uh, listen to our recording of the recording and comment on both of the comments. How's that? <laughs> so it'll be cool. This is, uh, this is uh, 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 very profound Chan instructions, Chan teachings that are dispensed in very simple terms. Um, this is his genius. All right. Uh, any questions tonight? Is something unfinished business or not? No? Yes, number six. Thank you, Master. May, may I ask a question related to Pure Land and the uh, 49 day? Sure. Okay. Um, if somebody dies, does the, you said the King Yama every seven days do kind of a review of uh, uh, the karma. Uh, does this mean uh, you will be in the intermediate skanda state for everybody for 49 days or it's an average? Because uh, sometimes you send people to Pure Land in say less than 49 days. Uh, a couple of weeks they, they are gone or a few weeks. So what about some people say that they go to hell or and they stay for 49 days or they within two weeks they they go into hell we um and typically when after you die and you become a ghost okay you go into the yin world where you it's uh, a lot of suffering for you and so uh, every one of us, most of us who are still in the wheel of reincarnation, like we, we have been for a long, long time, uh, we will then become a ghost. And this ghost of ours will die every seven days. So the, once we die, we become a ghost. You can live for seven days and it dies and live for another seven days and dies and live another seven days for a total of seven times or 49 days. That's why the 49-day uh, arithmetic. That's how we arrived at the number. And during this 49, during the seven days here, uh, each ghost gets a chance, will be brought in front of King Yama, who then, who then looks at record. So it could be the first day, second day, depending on his schedule. Very much like when you, uh, you die and uh, you try to schedule a, uh, a parlor for your friends and relatives to come and pay a last visit and so forth. Yes, you're totally at the mercy of, of the, the funeral home, the, you know, whatever the time slot. Same thing here. During seven days, could be the very first day, could be the very last day, but at least you will see the King Yama once. Some kind of ghost is digesting his food, clearly. Uh, so, because you only have, you can only live seven days, therefore, during this period, you get to see the King Yama, the judge, once, okay? Guaranteed. 
And during this, uh, during this, uh, this meeting here, the judge will look at you and say, well, you know, uh, this is uh, based on your record. This is where you're going next, okay? And uh, if you're going to the Pure Land, typically, if you have enough blessings for whatever the reasons are, hmm, then typically these beings will immediately want to go to the Pure Land because they don't like being a ghost. It's very, very uncomfortable. It's not fun at all. You find out yourself. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. don't yeah. don't have to to take my word as a Bible. You find out for yourself eventually. As I told you so. <laughs> okay, and and so typically the people who go uh, who, will, who who have enough blessings uh, to go to the pure land, then King Yama says, okay. Uh, it looks like you have a chance to go to the Pure Land, uh, but there's still time left. Are you in a hurry? Would you like to go right now? Because that's your choice. Or you can wait until the end of the 49-day periods uh, during which your blessings will accrue, and then you'll be born in a, much, uh, in a high grade, hopefully. And invariably, in my experience so far, that 100% of the time, people all left early. They say, ah, I'm out of here. I'm not going to wait. Okay? Maybe it has to do with how they're being indoctrinated by the Pure Land, the Asian Pure Land practitioners. They said, just go. They're so desperate to get to the Pure Land. That's all they care about. They're not taught about rebirth grade and you know, the stuff. So if they could go, they want to go right away. Okay. Uh, so there are a few reasons why they want to leave early. So usually is the case you know, that I observed so far the last 16 years. Every single case, they all left early. Uh, and uh, what about going to the house? Uh, suppose you are supposed to go to the house. And the King Yama says, okay, you're now supposed to go to the house. Okay, then uh, imagine that you, King Yama says, would you like to go to the house? Uh, what, how would you react? I'll say, no, I don't like it. There you go. I rest my case. If it were him, he'd say, no, I, uh, can we wait? I'm in no hurry. Can I wait, we wait another seven days? Something might happen. And this is the, uh, the um, what happens to them is that they have seven chances for the record to be improved, to ameliorate their chances of being born to a better place. So typically, when you go to the house, usually it's the end of the 49-day periods. That's why it happens. Uh, do I answer your question? That's it? OK. Yes, next, seven. Thank you, Master. So how does the record get improved every seven days? So during this 49-day period, the Buddhists in the know, by the tradition, which is I strongly urge you to try to maintain this in, in your culture, Asian culture is very high on this, even in a Korea, uh, they, uh, it's a very strong Buddhist nation, but they're losing a lot of their Buddhist disciples to Catholicism and Christianity. They switch to go to temples and churches instead of going to the Buddhist temples. And, um, but it's funny because uh, of their influence. Uh, they go to the churches, and the churches in Korea, I believe, are doing the 49-day service as well, <laughs> which is a good thing. It's a good thing because during this 49-day period, uh, the more blessings that accrue, the better off you'll be. Uh, so, and so how do you accrue uh, these blessings? Uh, well, you go to the temple and the Buddhist temples and the Korean churches, I'm told, 
they do, they recite things, they recite God's names, or they pray to God. Like the other night, we went to listen to the choir. They, they sing, they talk a little bit, you know, they all told the story about how God, you know, a Christian story, and then they would sing, and then they, and then they tell, you continue the story, and so forth. Okay. That is meritorious, okay? And those are good things. And so in doing those on your behalf, they're creating blessings on your behalf, and they will be added on the plus column in your record. Similarly, if during this 49-day period, and your relatives and family and friends uh, decide to do something on your behalf, such as they said, you know, uh, let's have, uh, uh, let's get together and have a last drink on, in memory of this, uh, of our friends. So they gather in, here in San Jose, what's that? Original Joe's? No commercial relationship, okay. Um, uh, so they get together in the bar and they have a drink, okay? Okay. Drinking alcohol is unmeritorious, if you will. So you're creating offenses, and therefore it goes into the negative column of the deceased. Okay. For example, for uh, because they someone drank, and then they went home, and they got into an accident, hurt someone. That goes on the record of the disease as well. So you see, during this forty-nine day period, if you do things that are meritorious and virtuous on behalf of the deceased, then uh, it helps them increase their blessings. Whereas you do, you create offenses, uh, then the disease will also suffer as well. All right? Now, uh, typically, uh, this is very important to bear in mind because the Asian tradition really, really is more or less, to me, um, superstition. They simply go to the temple and, uh, and uh, on a Sunday once uh, for two hours, the temple would recite or do something on, on behalf of, of uh, a few deceased people. They, that's when they perform the 49-day service. At least that's what my uh, uh, um, Vietnamese uh, master's uh, temple did. Okay, this is their tradition. Mm. On Sundays from 10 to 12, the temples would uh, recite something on the behalf of the deceased. They call it something like uh, praying for the Vong Lin, the uh, deceased spirits. That's a proper name. That's a precise name. And they, they, they do it for two hours, and that generates blessings for, on behalf of the deceased. However, it's usually it's not enough. So, but I, as I said, I still encourage uh, all Asians, uh, especially young ones, to maintain this tradition, even though it's not enough for rebirth of the Pure Land, but it's very helpful. It's greatly appreciated, trust me. Okay, at least you go to a good temple, decent temple, the deceased will get fed, will get food and drinks, uh, every day, they're hungry too, uh, and and uh, and they uh, will receive uh, good blessings, hopefully, uh, so that they can be they will not fall to the lower realms. Anyone else? Okay. Let's continue with the lecture then. Uh, yes, too. Thank you, Master. Uh, about one year ago, my husband asked me a question that I don't know how to answer. It doesn't uh, bother me at that time, so I have never asked, but now I want to ask help from Master. 
his question is, uh, what's the connection between uh, sudden teaching and the samadhi levels? Uh, he think it's uh, contradict uh, contradictory because if you can be enlightened at one moment, why why you need to cultivate to get higher and higher samadhi levels? Why don't you just wait for that moment? Thank you, Master. Okay. Uh, the question shows a lack of understanding uh, of enlightenment. Enlightenment is not the way you Chinese people read or Asians read in the scriptures. It's not like, like that at all. I was confused too. Especially the way the Asian uh, patriarch and Asian teachers uh, taught and trained their disciples. Uh, it's uh, confusing. So it's not surprising that your, your peers, your husband, would have a uh, would totally misunderstand the certain teaching and samadhi levels and so forth. Okay. Mm. Suffice it to say, to in answer as an answer to his question, uh, fact is that enlightenment. I'm, I'm here to demystify that because I don't feel that uh, we we're helping our followers and, and uh, even the non-Buddhists by adding more confusion. Mm. We should demystify this. Enlightenment uh, is a state of accomplishment mm. that will uh, that has multiple levels. Okay, enlightenment is not one thing. Enlightenment has first level is first ground Buddhist, um, first ground, second lowest level is second ground, and so forth. Okay, so enlightenment has gradations as well. This is why even amongst enlightened people, uh, we uh, have hierarchies. Uh, we're not treated equally. Enlightened people, you know, only here in America, enlightened people like Master Xinhua, uh, enlightened disciple, look, I'm, I'm, I'm enlightened, I'm the best. Baloney, look around. Even if you're enlightened, look around you, you really are that good. You see that a lot more, you know, lots of enlightened people who are better than you. Okay? Mm. And so, so that's why enlightenment has multiple levels. So it's not like, why, why, why do I have to uh, do samadhi or do it uh, uh, improve? Enlightenment can be improved. You can go from one enlightened level to the next enlightenment level, which typically takes about uh, like 200 million years at the slowest rate. I mean, at the fastest rate. This will be covered in chapter 39, entering the Dharma realm, where good wealth, young good wealth, this pure youth, was taught by Manjushri Bodhisattva to go seek good knowing advisors. So the first one he met was the first ground Bodhisattva, and he sat there and he practiced. And uh, so good wealth, because he got such a good reference from Manjushri. So this first good new advisor agreed to teach him. So he, he learned the Dharma door. He practiced for uh, a few hundred million years before he could move on to the next, and then to the next, and to the next. Okay, So it takes a long, long time. It's not that fast. All right, so that just shows the question is uh, based on a lack of understanding of enlightenment. And all. that's why even after we are enlightened, you are enlightened, you have to continue to improve. Okay, the only time when you don't need to improve is when you reached the price. Buddhahood. Until then, we all need to improve. Okay. Now, it also shows a lack of understanding of the concept of certain teaching. 
which is basically, again, the Asians don't understand at all. Nowadays, you know, again, because I feel that Chinese teachers are making it too abstract, and therefore, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to demystify that uh, in, uh, with our English instructions. And you see, okay? All right. Anything else? Okay. Today, we will talk about Dharma Master Gunabhadra. This Dharma Master was also Indian. Once you heard this name, you knew he was not Chinese, but he had the most affinity with Chinese. He came to China to propagate the Dharma. He must save Chinese. He vowed to come to China from India to teach and transform the Chinese living beings. This Dhamma Master wasn't born very smart, but later he studied Buddha Dharma and opened great wisdom. So he became smarter than anyone, smarter than all the people. He thoroughly penetrated the Tripitaka Sutra Vinaya and Shastra. He single-mindedly cultivated Chan and practiced Samadhi and attained profound Chan Samadhi. He was 
家庭，是个外道。为什么他那么愚痴呢？就因为他家里原来是外道。Originally, his family was externalists. Why was he so stupid? Because his family was externalists. 爸爸也是个外道，妈妈是个外道。His father was an externalist. His mother was also an externalist. To what extent were they as externalists? Ah, 不准家里所有的人看和尚。不准家里所有的人。接近比丘，啊，信仰沙门。No one in the family was permitted to look at a monk. Everyone in the family was not permitted to draw near pictures or believe in Shramana. Have you uh, uh, been fixing the English? Because it sounds like a different kind of English, as compared to week number two. No, I think it's it's uh, it's uh, quite a bit better. That's good. I want you to. I, I wanted to point out to you that a lot of work were put into this for your pleasure, for your entertainment, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy it while you still can. You will not imagine. I remember when I was at Master Shenhua's uh, temple, we have a Chan Chi instruction like this. We have one hour. Okay? And uh, so there was a uh, Chinese uh, uh, bilingual monk. Uh, who is, uh, who, and then there's a American monk, Caucasian monk, and they spent the entire day uh, listening to the tape on the cassette, and then transcribing it and then translating it. Every single day, it's like that. They don't meditate. They transcribe it and then translate it. Two people. Okay, so when the China person uh, did the translation, the English person did the, you know, the embellishing. It's a lot of work. Hmm. So uh, it's really a lot of work that goes into, uh, into this Dharma here. So enjoy it while you still can. Go on. You are Kanyan. If he saw a big chew approaching, he would describe this big chew to be more fierce than a tiger, more vicious than a poisonous snake. You can't get close to him. Once you get close, you will lose your life. You will lose your life. In Cantonese, lose your life, lose your life. So you will lose your life. Thus, no matter what, you can't get close to a Shramana. Because his family imposed such rules, therefore the kids were rather stupid. 
The kids were born not knowing the four books and six classics. They didn't know four and also didn't know six. They didn't know the four books and the six classics. They didn't know four, didn't know six. They didn't know numbers. Then how did Master Guna become smart after all? This cause and conditions was very special. One time he saw Nirvana Sutra. Once he read the Nirvana Sutra, he became enlightened. The Buddhism is so wonderful. The Buddha Dharma is so profound. Thus, he ran away from home and escaped. From the inside of the externalist practice door, he slipped through the door to the outside. He slipped through, he got outside. He got out and visited good knowing advisors. His cause and conditions weren't bad. He got out. Once he went outside, he encountered the so called tiger and poisonous snake. <coughs> He met a big chu. This big chu spoke Dharma for him. It is not easy to leave the home life. Not to mention to leave the home life yourself. Even if you saw a left home person, you need to have a good roots to see a left home person. Now the youth in America all have good roots. That's why you can meet left home people. The elder generation seldom saw left home people. Uh, 
啊，佢就见到过比丘，在美国的本国里很少见到。回 ，unless they went abroad on holiday and vacation a lot, they might run into Bhikshu. It is rare to see them in the U.S. 回着，有的见着是在那个地，在那个呃，布，看看见那个比丘这个样子啊。那么真正的亲近比丘的人很少的，这我可以呃下断的。Or some saw images of Bhikshu in pictures or books. I can assert that it was rare for them to truly draw near any Bhikshu. 那么现在你们这些个青年人呢，这个善根都成熟，所以呀、啊，啊，就有了比丘、比丘尼了。那、啊、么这个比丘啊，就对了。Now you young people, your good roots are matured. Thus, this country has Bhikshu and Bhikshu Ni. 他讲说你见着三宝啊，是很不容易的。Then the picture told him, "It is very difficult for you to meet the triple jewels." 那么你要是能出家做呃比丘，那更是不可思议了。If you can leave the home life and become a big chew, that would be even more inconceivable. The Starma Master, Gunabhadra. He shaved his head, left the home life, and became a big chew. Okay, let's revisit what he's trying to tell us here. What was the what was the slide number? One sixty something. One fifty four. That far back. Okay. He's Master Shenhua is introducing us to this another Indian master, Gunabhadra, and um, he uh, uh, Indian, but he chose to go to China to do, uh, do uh, Dharma propagation, and uh, he is uh, very smart. But the most impressive thing. For you, for us, if you look at this, is this is the gold standard that the monks here, this monk here, is a Tripitaka master, meaning he mastered the three baskets of Buddhism, the canon, the Buddhist canon, Sutra, Vinaya, and Shastra. Uh, when you recognize a, a, a Tripitaka master like Master Shinhua, uh, you're you're like. Uh, Way up there. Okay. And the funny thing is that uh, Master Shinhua didn't go to school at all. He just read. Hmm. And Gunabhadra hmm. practiced Chan hmm. and uh, uh, very vigorously. Um, Single-mindedly is a key word here uh, for Chan, uh, um, and he is able to enter very high level of Chan samadhis. Okay, so the thing here you need to understand that um, Chan is uh, a probably in Buddhism the most powerful dharma door for training uh, the next generation. Bar none. Okay, all the masters like Master Shenhua, who started by practicing tantras himself to become enlightened, and once he became enlightened, in order to train his disciples, 
next generation, he taught them chat. Okay, so that's why the people who really have blessings, who are really uh, have great roots, they all excel in the chan practice. Hmm? Master Shiju in particular is uh, the reason he went to secret school is because for later, for the future, because if you practice chan alone, when it's time for you to go and do your work, uh, it's not as useful if you were to practice chan and tantra. Because in our work, we use tantras a lot to, uh, to um, keep the demons in check, okay? And solve problems. Hmm. Remember, it's a, it, this, this world here is, is a fight between good and evil. Evil is, is uh, the demon side. And the demons are trying to destroy our world, so that's why we have to come to the world to compensate for that, keep them in check. It's how important it is. Without Mahayana, uh, the demons would be running wild and will be chaos in the world. Okay, there's no shelter for you, nowhere it's safe for you. At least in we Mahayana Buddhists, that's what we believe. Okay, hmm. that's our that's our uh, mission in life is. It provides you safe oasis for you to go there and, um, and um, have a good life, okay? And our areas are, the demons cannot come in, all right? And originally, this Gunabhadra was born into an externalist family. He's rather stupid. He's stupid because their, his parents uh, stopped him from s studying at all, even math or arithmetic, mm. or in particular, uh, they, were, they were taught to shun the monks and nuns. Because okay? mm. uh, the monks and nuns were uh, portrayed to them as kids, uh, to the kids, when they were kids, as, uh, uh, as uh, very dangerous, as evil, vicious, like a tiger, as, uh, or a poisonous snake. So you have to keep away from them. And, and I, I don't quite get what, it has, what does it have to do with being dumb, being stupid. Uh, but but um, eventually I hope will be clearer as Master Shihua uh, finishes his story. Uh, to this point here, I said, uh, what's the relationship again? Uh, uh, the externalist has a lot of brilliant kids who don't need to be taught. Okay? Even though they are not allowed to read or draw near, you born, being smart is your blessings. It has nothing to do with your family. Your family may be very mediocre, but you can be brilliant. You can be a genius yourself. Okay? Hmm. Very hard to find a family that's all geniuses. All right. And uh, so, uh, so the kids were stupid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They didn't read the four Vedas the, um, in India. And the wisdom was stored in the four Vedas, the four books, or the six classics. Uh, classics, you refer to Confucianism, right? Yes or no? I don't know. Indian system. It is. Okay. Uh, so, if that's the case, immediately, I would like, but they were in India. <laughs> There's no six classics. Someone said, sacrilegious master, you're so sacrilegious, you are attacking your old master. <laughs> okay? Uh, come on. Oh, see? 
my retribution. I swallowed my <laughs> loss and <child. laughs> Okay? When you create offenses, there's a price to pay. There's some consequences. <laughs> okay? Mm. Luckily, I didn't lose my life. <laughs> you never know how they react. <laughs> okay? So, six classics. Let's do it. Indian. Indian. Anyway, so couldn't even add, okay? Uh, couldn't even know, didn't even know numbers. So how do you become smart after all, okay? Uh, he saw Nirvana Sutra. I don't know where this comment says. It's actually it's a, some sort of Shastra here. Uh, the Abhi, Abhidhamma, uh, 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 Shastra on the Abhidhamma. Uh, and he became enlightened just like that. Okay, and and it's yes, it's possible. And this is so. This is what's fantastic about Buddhism, is that these sutras and these scriptures uh, we are taught to read them, to recite them. Okay. And, well, for example, a lot of monks and nuns uh, who are worried about the financial support. I, I learned this Dhamma door when I went to Taiwan. And so, so uh, these nuns in particular in Taiwan, uh, usually, you know, the Buddhist disciples prefer to support the monks. The nuns are not important in Taiwan at all. Uh, so these nuns here, we, I saw a nun have a big temple and a kind of a rich temple. And I was curious. I said, how did it happen? And it turns out that every day she would recite the Lotus Sutra. Every single day without fail. Okay? So this is, this is what you do. You recite... If you're a monk or nun, you worry about yeah, in the future you disciples plan to you know take off and have you know your own temple and in your search for glory. <laughs> okay, you could do that too. You you know you can you you create merit and virtue by reciting sutras, especially the big sutras. So. And I heard the same story in over and over again in Taiwan in particular. Okay? A lot of monks and nuns recite the Lotus Sutra. And also in Los Angeles, there's a Vietnamese monk who's now dead. Uh, he's uh, actually he's, he's, uh, not a very good monk. Okay? Not very impressive because they lack the training, the proper training. But but he has, before he died, he built the biggest Vietnamese temple in Los Angeles, in that area, uh, LA County, or Orange County. And uh, he started by a small temple. Uh, I went there, uh, okay. uh, and, and uh, a few times. Uh, and uh, he was there for like uh, two decades. So saving up money, and then the opportunities came. Uh, he was told of a property uh, in in Orange County, uh, and so he said, "Well, it's time for me to move over." Okay, and he didn't have any money. So what did he do? Mm. He recited the Avatamsaka Sutra every single day. Every single day, okay, uh, and he, t he said this himself. I don't know how true it is. Because I can only tell you what I heard. Okay, I hear a lot of you know nice stories <laughs> that help me and encourage me to stay on because you see this is, could be easier. I can do it too. <laughs> so he recited. He 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 didn't have enough money, so he short. Of money, so he said, "Well, you know, based on what I know, I, you know, a lot of stories I heard, so I will recite the Avatamsaka Sutra every single day." Oh, oh, 
Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. And all of a sudden, someone dropped by and gave him a check for 1.58 million bucks. Exactly what he needed. Okay, and then he started to recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so we recite the Avatam Sutra every single day, non-stop. Okay, so So the Buddhist, the Buddhist tradition of reciting Mahayana sutras is fantastic. Uh, and this uh, Guna Bhadra here became enlightened, you see? That's another benefit, is even bigger in getting a temple, is that once you become enlightened like this, your blessings, you know, you're worth at least uh, a few hundred temples, not just one. Okay? Uh, if you want it, you can have a few hundred temples, maybe a few thousand. Okay, so he merely looked, read the Nirvana Sutra, he became enlightened, and that's certain teaching. It's called certain enlightenment. Okay, you tell peers that. That's an example of certain enlightenment. Okay, uh, all right. So he says, enlightenment meaning he opened the wisdom, so he. Understood. He had this understanding he didn't have before. He said, "Wow!" And he used the word "wonderful." Okay, uh, mm. Buddhism is so wonderful. The Buddha Dharma is so profound. You know, profound meaning you get. It's so impressive. You get deeper and deeper, and the more the closer you get, you realize there's still more to go. That's profound. It's not the end yet. You keep on digging and digging. There's so much more, and that's Mahayana. Okay, Hinayana, no such thing. Buddhism is wonderful, you know. Uh, and so he ran away from home and okay, and uh, uh, slipped through, uh, got away from his parents. You know. Um, and uh, because he has wisdom, but what did he do? This is also a very important tradition in Indian Buddhism. Okay, uh, he visited good knowing advisors. I'm not sure that uh, the original. Uh, story, part of the original story, but Master Shiva stressed this. This is very important. He said this for a reason. Okay, he says, even when you have wisdom, even after you become enlightened, what are you supposed to do? Look for good, no advisors. And that's the difference between Hinayana and Mahayana. Mahayana, we always look at a good no advisor. Hinayana says, "I made it. I made it. I made it. Okay, I'm enlightened." And uh, um, and he, uh, 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 what kind of good no advisors? Uh, he met the monks and nuns. It's just monk hmm, who sat. Uh, uh, a lot of things, but Master Shewa said the key thing here uh, that appealed to him and struck a chord with this young Indian, enlightened Indian. So I imagine at that stage, this young, enlightened Indian was more like in the Ahad range. First stage Ahad, maximum fourth stage Ahad. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so. Mm, so, but uh, but uh, it's considered enlightenment. And Master Shio, he told these stories to his disciples in the early days, which I doubt that any of them was enlightened. Okay, uh, so to him, to them, enlightenment they should know was the the Ahat range. Okay, uh, the first to fourth stage Ahats. Uh, And this uh, 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 this uh, bhikshu here that he met uh, spoke the dharma for him. In particular, the main thing is that 
very difficult to lead the home life. Okay. Uh, uh, and it's not just uh, uh, being able to meet with a monk and nun. The Master Shiva says, you know, monks and nuns, there aren't many of them at all. In America, it's very difficult for you to meet a left home person and say, say what? The Tibetan monks are everywhere. It's not true. Nowadays, maybe back then, his, uh, his time is very difficult in the 60s. Okay. But nowadays, it's not the case anymore. They're everywhere. Yeah. Monks and nuns are everywhere. Hmm? Each person gets a uh, small temple. Yeah. Hmm. And, and, uh, 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 and uh, so... And so at the time, uh, and so in the 1970s, apparently, uh, there weren't a lot of monks and nuns. Uh, and uh, in order to see a monk and nun, you have to go abroad to Asia, basically, to run into a monk and nun. Or you could go to Europe, I'm pretty sure, when there's some Zen practitioners there, Hinayana practitioners. Okay? But in the U.S., very few. Uh, and um, nowadays, uh, now we have uh, bhikshus and bhikshunis. Uh, and I think it's difficult for him to spell out that monks and nuns are not equal. I think that's what he meant. He says it's very difficult for you to meet with a monk and nun, meaning good monks and nuns, I think. Hmm? Hmm. And now he says, now my disciples are good monks and nuns. See, it's very Chinese. And they say things you know, indirectly, you know. Vietnamese ki, well, you know. You don't talk like that. And so, so that's why it's, it's Chinese, Vietnamese, Asian they have this style, you know, they say, no, 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 you make allusions to it. You don't speak bluntly like the Americans. It's no class. Americans have no class whatsoever. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So, so he says, this country now has big shoes and big shoes. Uh, so his disciples. And come to think of it, his disciples back then, would be 70s. He started, he came here in the late 60s, so within two or three years, uh, I don't think any of them were really enlightened yet. Maybe they get into first, second stage of Ahats, and there's a big deal already. Let's see, see how, how much in the dark people here in the U.S. And, and so uh, this big shoe told me very difficult you meet with the triple jewels, okay? Uh, and even more difficult for you to leave the home life, become a big shoe. Now, what did he do? Hmm. Shave his head. That's all it took for him. Hmm. So, hmm. so you can tell that from all this story here, uh, Gunabhadra. Uh, has tremendous blessings. He's born into some bad environment. Uh, the externalists could not derail his mission. Uh, and and, um, and uh, when he met with the materials such as Nirvana Sutra, Mahayana, Mahayana scriptures, the uh, reciting them, uh, the good roots mature just like that. That's incredible. What does it tell us? What is the lesson we learned from this? The translations matter. Making, making the Dharma available really, really matters. Okay, Shen. Okay, let me explain. Hmm. 
Uh, Masha Shuyuan, for example, he spoke a lot of Dharma and it's recorded in cassette tapes. Uh, and uh, this is a sore point with me, uh, uh, from me with them, in that that's, uh, that the Dharma there should be made available. Okay, because the Dharma is very difficult to encounter. Okay, uh, and so, and therefore, uh, therefore, it is important uh, to, for it to be made available for everyone, freely. The Dharma is freely, is freely dispensed. Uh, same thing. Uh, so it's very difficult. And so therefore, if in the future we have the chance to make his Dharma available without getting into trouble, uh, copyrights or whatever uh, complications help do that because of the story here. You should bring forth the, the resolve to say if I am able to um, make uh, this uh, Mahayana teachings available uh, right now, it's very easy for us. We throw it on the internet hmm? and work with SEOs so that it uh, can easily found. Okay. Uh, so it will be tremendously helpful. Okay. Uh, but not just junk. Remember, he became enlightened by reading a Nirvana or the Abhidharma Shastra. So you have to propagate the great Dharma, not just any Dharma. Okay. Please pay attention to that. It's a huge, makes a huge difference. It's the same amount of time for you, but it's a bigger payoff. So far, so good? Hmm. And so that's the first thing. And the other thing is that uh, he listened to Dharma and shaved his head. So that monk there he met was pretty, pretty cool. You know? He's a pretty potent monk for his teaching. Uh, to sink in so quickly. The other, you know, I nice, you know, we talked about a lot of stories and uh, didn't sink at all. <laughs> uh, so, you see, uh, so this, this uh, Gunabhadra is a very special individual. Mm. has a tremendous blessings. And so you see, uh, the blessings are there. It doesn't show, you know, from this is a person who is an externalist, born their externalist family. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and um, he... Um, In spite of the difficult conditions, circumstances, he could not uh, be sunk, and he only needed to be exposed to <clears throat> the proper dharma. You know, very quickly, uh, the power of the dharma, power of Nirvana Sutra, the power of this dharma master, a monk who spoke dharma to him enabled his good roots to mature even more. That's how he's able to, got ahead, to get ahead very quickly. All right? Any questions or comments? <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what's irritating my throat. Okay, let's do it by elimination. Then we remove the uh, candle, please. If that doesn't work. Hmm. Uh, that's, uh, please uh, uh, bear with me because um, people on the internet thinking I'm dying or something. No, I'm not dying. <laughs> I'm perfectly uh, um, of a 
healthy body. And I say in mine, <laughs> she's karmic obstructions. Yeah. That's all. You don't have enough blessings. That's why you have to put up with my, my horse voice. Um, okay. Are we there? Are we there yet? Okay. Yes, six. Thank you, Master. I think it could be the, the flowers, the pollen. Uh, the pollen is very strong. Could be. Yes. You're probably right. Thank you. Okay, but which flowers? <laughs> <laughs> I the, like flowers. The white, the lily, the big one right there. Bottom one, Link. Bottom one. No. No. Yeah. No, no, let's not overdo it. <laughs> That's the one. I, I only have half an hour to go, and this will carry me through. Okay? Don't, let's not panic. Okay? Hmm. No, they're just happy to unbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, continue, please. He was a novice at first and later fully ordained. Gunabhadra translates into merits virtue. In the Six Patriarch Sutra, there was Dharma Mitra and also Gunabhadra. Guo Yi asked me before, he said, was Dharma Mitra certifying monk for the sixth patriarch? There is no way to research and prove that, but I can say this. I can say that there were two Dharma master, Dharma Mitra. Because there are many people with the same name, just like Westerners, for example, we have a few Steves, yes? 
Okay, yes, Wei Meng. Master, go back to slide 186. Um, uh, the English translation missing the word xian, uh, which is worthy in the Gong Da Xian. Is that right? Yes. So, what's in the name? A rose in a different name would still smell the same. Never mind. <clears throat> you know, too Asian. I, I can't stand this. <clears throat> so, um, the name actually Gunabhadra translate into Gung Te Xian, which means merit, virtue, and worthy. And the same Xian here as uh, our uh, Bhikshun, Bhikshuni's um, uh, Dharma name as well. Okay. Yes, so he's correct. Uh, it should be merit, and virtue, and uh, worthy. Okay, but really it doesn't make much difference. Continue. Steve, love it. Steve, we have many Steves. At that time, Indians were the same. Many have the same name. They are probably similar to English names. That's why there were many with the same name. Especially the person might have one or two characters that were different. But in China, when Sanskrit was translated into Chinese, the Chinese sometimes made this mistake. They said that close enough is good enough. A little bit off is okay. <laughs> if they wanted to call him Steve, they call him Steve. Not. They did it like that. Because this was the Song Dynasty, from Song Dynasty to Tang Dynasty was over 100 years. The ancient from over 100 years ago can't live till over 100 years later and certifying for Great Master Six Patriarch. So you can say that Gunabhadra and Dhammamitra were two people. Not only two, it is all right for you to say there are several hundred or several thousand people as well. So, 
，不要一定追究是回事，这些不不关重要的，嗯，就就是一个人的名字嘛。So it is unnecessary to investigate what was going on. Those were not important. It was just somebody's name. So it is unnecessary to spend too much effort or time here. See how gentle he was. Basically, he could have said, what a stupid question. But no, he had, you know, let me explain to you. Historically, this is what happened. It's hard to teach, you know, <laughs> these people. JC. The Hanguko Hongo Joga Ulaon E. Chimbongim Chimunimida Uriga Algoinen Sade Songin Yesunim, Putonim, Socratesan, Modu Oguran, Jugumer, Maja Shasimida Yesunimen, Jeja Yudai Peshinuro Putonimen, Chundai Gongangro 소크라테스는 악법도 법이다라는 명언을 남기고 스스로 독약을 마시고 죽었습니다. 모두가 억울한 죽음을 맞이했지만 그분들은 성인의 반열에 올랐습니다. 그러나 내가 보통 사람인 우리가 그 입장에서 죽는다면 그냥 억울한 죽음이라고 할 것입니다. 여기에 두 가지 질문이 있습니다. 첫 번째 그들의 죽음과 우리의 차이는 무엇인가요? 두 번째, 어떻게 하면 사대의 성인들과 같이 훌륭한 죽음을 맞이할 수 있을까요? 영화 마스터께 질문 드립니다. 이상입니다. There are great sages uh, that I'd like to mention. Uh, one of them is Jesus. He was, uh, he faced his death by betraying of one of his disciples. His name is, I don't know, my sir, I don't remember his name, Yuda. Did I say right? Close and, enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the Buddha. Judah. Uh, also, thank you. It's Judah. a Judah. Yeah, you're a Judah. That's a very common expression. When you call someone traitor, yeah, the Catholics call them, you are a Judah. Yeah, sorry. This, <clears throat> this question is from Yi Jin Bok, by the way. And also Buddha, okay. he faced yeah. his death. And then also uh, the famous philosopher Aristo Aristotle. Aristotle. He also, uh, in the end, he faced his death by drinking poison. So if this kind of death anyone face, ordinary people will say, that's unfair death. So I have two questions. Number one, what is the difference between their death and our death? And also, how do we get, how do we become, how do we face this great death, like this uh, sages? All right, uh, so it's a very long question. I'm not sure I can answer the questions because you're referring to sages of the Western civilization. Uh, from what I look at Aristotle's teachings, he's, to me, he's not a sage at all. Uh, to me, Jesus' teaching is a little bit better. Okay, Aristotle's uh, teaching is uh, too much nonsense. Too much nonsense to me. Uh, I read only a few teachings, few of these sayings. I, why do you go there? Okay. 
uh, why do you spend so much time talking about this nonsense? It's just like, you know, me listening to Masha Shio, I try and explain to this questioner, there are like uh, 20 Steves in your country. Uh, the problem I have with that approach is that I can understand where he's coming from. These, uh, the listener, this particular person is from a, uh, has, has, a, has an educational background. So he says, I'm based on my understanding. I heard of this name before and so forth and so forth and so forth. So it's understandable. He says, you know, I'm connected with the six page of sutra and, and so. Uh, basically, you try to explain too much to such a person, which he seems to have a tendency of doing, it seems to encourage them to continue to think like that. It's not Chan at all. Chan teaching is it. Oh. Now I'm in big trouble. Don't kill me tonight, okay? Okay? It's brutality. You get to the point very quickly. You don't go around and say, you know, I can see where you're coming from historically. This is what happened. This is not the year. So what? It's just too long. And when you do that, they follow you. And they're, oh, 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 oh. And they are false thinking like crazy. So you're encouraging them to false think, to process it. See my problem? Okay? So, it, it's not healthy. Uh, because once he answers it that way, okay, then the other people say, hey, it's okay for me to, you know, to th process information. which is uh, contrary to the Chan training at all. This is what I, my, I object to, the way he answered that, uh, you know, that name right there. Dhamma Mitra is the same. Gunabhadra, uh, you know, uh, is the same guy. And I say, no, it isn't. Next. So that you, you know, so this, this person who asked a question, he said, oh, he didn't like the, my question. The message is very clear without having to say it. Okay? So that's, um, that's what happens. Ouch. Uh, but, uh, you know, we will able to glue it, right? Glue it back, right? <laughs> Don't abandon me. Okay. Master, I, I'm sorry, I have a one correction. It's not Aristotle, it's a, a Socrates. Socrates and not the idiot. Uh, so we bring this, we bring him with us. I have bigger things to worry about. You know? Like this guy's going to get upset at me. You don't want to piss him off. And this is, by the way, is equivalent to shedding a Buddha's blood. At least 90% of it. <laughs> Don't do what I do, okay? So, that's collected and bring it with us, okay? I will repent. Uh, I don't feel like talking to you anymore. I'm sorry, uh, for something happened and I... Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, I have my own problems, okay? <laughs> Lots of problems. Probably cannot imagine. This is this is a disaster. And for us to cultivate in the in the, in the Bodhi Manda, this is the other guy, right? Not the one with the with the, the other guy is not. I'm not scared of this guy as much as this guy. Hmm. He's important. He's a Vajra. He's a Vajra protector, meaning that the demons are very scared of him. <laughs> you know. He, he's a good guy. <laughs> oh, we don't show our appreciation enough. Okay, from now on, you, know, you can go like this. 
love you. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, no, was I? Mm. So, 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 Socrates is slightly better, Aristotle, uh, but I, I like some of the Socrates saying, but it, it lacks, it lacks depth. He's very shallow. He's probably a level of first day jihad or so. And not much to his, his, uh, his vision, his, uh, his teachings at all. He didn't quite understand the nature of people's heart yet. And so he just appeals to you know, too much of the intellect. And Jesus is uh, better. Jesus can appeal to your, to your heart, to, to your good nature. That's very important. Okay? Uh, and so Jesus, I'm, I look at Jesus as, as having uh, more wisdom than Socrates. Um, but is he a sage? Not in Mahayana standards. Jesus is far from being a Mahayana sage. I'm told, and I have no way of proving it, I'm told that Jesus is maybe like an Ahat, a lower, which makes sense to me, uh, to be able to face death with no fear. And, um, and go like this without, you know, without, without, uh, without being afraid of the pain, you know, you hang like that. And they, they cut out your, your eyelids, it's pretty severe. Mm. So I say he's around fourth day jihad range, but certainly it's, it's not, it's not uh, really, really uh, profound wisdom, mm. okay? Uh, the reason I don't look at that as uh, wisdom because they cannot help you. They can't really help us at all. We have a problem, they don't know how to help us. That's the bottom line for me, okay? I have a problem. What can you do for me? How, how can you help me fix my problems? Okay? Uh, okay, what was the question again? Next thing was Buddha. Buddha was, uh, he faced his death <laughs> because Chunda offered uh, him something to eat and he passed away. And uh, it, I think that all these uh, sages passed away and uh, faced unfair death. Uh, the ordinary people, if these things happen, would not be accepting this kind of death. Uh, smoothly. And so what's the difference between ordinary people and these people that I mentioned? And the second question is, uh, how can I face this w a great death? Okay. First question again is, Comparing this, uh, the people that he mentioned, and uh, how they face their death, compared to the ordinary people, if in their situation, they will think the death was unfair. So what's the difference how they face their death between this uh, Socrates, Jesus, and Buddha, uh, compared to the ordinary person? Uh, my quick answer is none of my business. How Socrates died or how Jesus died really have zero effect or relevance for me, you know, because I don't look at them as uh, important enough for me to even bother looking uh, or, or trying to learn from them, unfortunately. So, so irrelevant. 
How Buddha died is something else. Okay, uh, that's uh, that is not um, something we can discuss because Buddha is Buddha. He didn't really die. You want to look at it from a uh, from a real mark perspective. He didn't die at all. So that's why there's no death. Okay, that's my way of chickening out of the, the issue. Uh, to say it gently, uh, without saying something like it's a stupid question, uh, uh, don't go there. Okay, there's no need. You know, don't waste time looking at Socrates, Aristotle, uh, Toto, Toto or Toto? Um, Aristotle? What happened to Google? What is the matter with you? Just play Google thing. <clears throat> I would not bother looking, going there, or uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, it's uh, a different world. It's not for us. So, um, just don't don't waste time on those things. I mean, before you didn't know, so you can look into those things as part of uh, your education, part of your general interest. But now you have you encountered Mahayana. I would delve more into the Bodhisattva's teachings and uh, and the Mahayana texts, and that's a much better use of your time. Okay. How do you do the, the big death, uh, face, have a, uh, the great death or whatever? Uh, you, uh, uh, you uh, the Buddhist teaching, you end your birth and death. So that is, you have no more death, and that's a great death. Um, is this shedding the Buddha's blood? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. No, I'm so sorry. I have to show remorse. You're having too much fun, boy. <laughs> he sees something broken, he look at him. He like it, huh? <laughs> it's not too bad. You know, you take something, stick and glue it back. Yeah. Thank you. What? You didn't answer my question. Yes, it is. As close as it gets. Well, well um, it's kind of Buddha. I can't say cate categorically that he's not a Buddha. That's why I'm scared. <laughs> if I look at him and say, you're not a Buddha, who cares? <laughs> I can't see him, that's why uh, I don't know. Better be safe than sorry. Show remorse. I'm remorseful. Okay, uh, did I answer the second question? Uh, you have a great death by ending your birth and death so that you can die when you feel like. You are in control of your death and life. And that's a great death. Okay, uh, but for you who are not quite there yet, then a good Good death uh, you know, is uh, lack of suffering and uh, uh, lack of pain and so forth. And those are the general descriptions. Uh, but to me, good death is when you have a good life. Has a life been meaningful? Have you made a difference? Uh, Westerners look at, you know, what is my success? Uh, how successful was I? Okay, uh, that's an uh, empty criteria. To me, good life is how many people you help, what difference you make uh, in this world. All right, anyone else? I have five more minutes. Yes, in the back. Master, that piece um, you broke was already broken that torn, glued it 
back in <laughs> before. Just well, no, it was broken when it was shipped here. So just so you know. Somebody must enjoy watching me sweat. <laughs> see, my ears are all red, right? <laughs> I, I do see a little bit of wetness on your head. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Okay, thank you, Tuan, for your concern. <laughs> I will fix it right, okay? Yeah. So Brady, I hope Brady is listening. Uh, Brady, I bring the statue to you soon, and please help us fix it right. Okay. All right, anyone else? Thank you for the information. Mm. But I'm still remorseful. <laughs> Yes, too. I volunteer to fix this as a material scientist. Do <laughs> you have the materials here? Yeah, I, we, we don't want to. We don't want to ship it back to Toronto. <laughs> we need his protection. Yeah. I will go to Home Depot tomorrow to get it. It's not that. The way Brady fixes these things is that he drills a hole here and the other side. and put the sticks in here and then glue it together so that they're stronger. Okay. That's a proper way. You can't simply glue it like some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the way to do it. It's funny, it's a funny to me because when uh, we first shipped here and I heard it's broken and I heard that it was fixed by him, you know what was my first reaction? I knew it was not done right already. I knew it. I said, he simply, you know, it's me a little bit. <laughs> I knew it already. But at the time, two or three years ago, two years ago, he was scary. So I, 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 I brush over the information that came to me and said, oh, no, it's not done right. He didn't do it right. But, you know, but I ignore the information. He's not coming with him. Elegantly, effortlessly. <laughs> now it came back to haunt me. Hmm. What's a cock rock wrapper? What? Yeah, that's a wrapper. What it does is, is it coats my throat so that the, the irritants cannot get to it. But once it dries up, the irritants are still here. Anyway, anyone else would like to make a comment or have a question? Okay, and then he says, Master Shiho says, the arc archaeologists are looking for things to do and have nothing better to do. No, I disagree. And we should be more respectful. They have their use in society, and that's important. Uh, uh, I'm thinking of, I don't know about you, but Indiana Jones. <laughs> no? No, I found him so, to be so inspirational, second only to, you know. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. Master Shenhua has um, things like this, say things like this, which is, uh, uh, to me, uh, to me, if your kids want to go into archaeology and they hear this, they say, oh, no, I'm not going to go into it. It would be a shame. Yeah, they should pursue things that interest them. Hmm. 
to say that they have no, nothing better to do is uh, a little bit too strong. Too direct, if you will. Yeah. Wrong time to be direct. <laughs> okay? Anyway, would you like me to continue or shall we stop here? <laughs> <laughs> you making fun of her but this lady here yesterday she came and she sat and she, she practiced Chan is it yesterday? Yes, yes. Right? and, and she, she meditated and, and, and uh, at night she couldn't sleep at all yeah. couldn't sleep that. and so this morning she, she went home and said I'm going to better get some rest because it's not good for me and uh, the head hurts and so forth. And I explained, I said, no, not sleeping is a fact, is due to the fact she, her chi is so strong. She didn't need the rest. Hmm. And the head having a headache was because they, uh, they had uh, uh, too much mental processing and uh, had some blockages up there. So she should have continued, not be afraid. And we clear it up. And you know, when you meditate and you begin to have head issues and palpitations and so forth, it's going to happen to all of you. Really? It's a good sign. Really? Yeah. Because we, ha we, have, we do too much mental processing. We eventually, at all levels, you're going to find out that you have some blockages up here. Hmm. And, uh, and, and you find out for yourself, all of us. Well, maybe almost all of us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Meaningless things, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, uh, you know, let's not have archaeologists you know, in the world don't do, real, don't do real work. This is real. Okay, <laughs> okay. it's, it's uh, we can't finish this uh, quickly at all, okay? Uh, it's, uh, you may disagree with me as well. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so let's stop here tonight uh, so that a poor lady can uh, continue to be tortured. <laughs> Look at her. See, notice how polite the Chinese are. Usually, if it happens to me, they will be videotaping it, you know. <laughs> but no Chinese but is uh, taping her. Drive carefully, please. You know, it's, uh, roads are slippery, so remember, in our, in our, uh, uh, our neighborhood, Mm. When you are when you're driving, always recite uh, Medicine Master Buddha's name for your own protection. Okay, you won't get into accidents. Mm.